So you're moving to Charleston, South Carolina, and you're trying to lock down the best place for you to live. Well, I've broken it down for you, and we've helped tons of people relocate here to the low country. And we definitely have the relocation process dialed in. So I'm gonna be walking through the main areas that people are choosing when they move here, and it really boils down to one of three things. Whether you wanna live in the city, you live in the suburbs, or you want to live more rural and have some land that you can call your own. So I'm going to go through those areas and I'm going to explain each one so that you can know which area is best for you when moving to Charleston, South Carolina. And when we talk about city living, we're talking about what a lot of people think of when they think of living in the city in Charleston. They think of actually living on the peninsula, which may or may not be uh, within someone's financial means. Uh, if I go down to the map here real quick, uh, we are looking at, this is the Charleston Peninsula. Um, this is kind of the touristy area right in here. Uh, so that if you've ever visited, you probably know East Bay Street. Uh, you probably know uh, Meeting Street right here. Uh, the uh, Broad Street right here. And then King Street is right here. So if you've been here, that's kind of what people see. And of course, if you've been here, you've probably ventured into South of Broad, Harleston Village, and up in this area as well. And a lot of people, that's where they want to be. These houses are going to be, you know, hundreds of years old. And they're going to be, for the most part, millions of dollars. So sometimes, I mean, if you have that, that's great and you can afford that. But just know that when you get one of these houses, I'm going to scroll in a little bit. You got to know that the lots are small and they're very very close together like I mean it's like you're knocking on your neighbor's window from your kitchen to get a cup of sugar in some of these houses um, it, they're very close by um, now a lot of these like you see this city block here and there's like a lot of area in the, in in the middle of the block sorry can't talk there um, but you know for the most part these are very tight very close together um, and very expensive I mean you're you're right in the heart of the downtown area so what is also considered sort of city living is what an area called West Ashley which is just the west of Charleston and you have a lot more area out here and you can get some houses as low as three hundred thousand dollars out in this area now granted that's not going to get you a house on the water uh, if that's what you're looking for anywhere in Charleston, if you want to be on the Stono River, the Ashley River, the Cooper River, the Wando River, um, you, you're talking millions of dollars, uh, especially as closer to the coast as you can get. Now, when you get up into Somerville in the Ashley River area, it's not going to be quite that expensive. And as you can see, the Ashley River is really wide um, down in this area. But as we get up into Somerville, it almost becomes like a creek. And these houses up here that are still, for Somerville, are going to be six, dollars $700,000 houses, $800,000 houses, but they're not going to be as expensive as down here. So if being on the water is something important to you, know that that's what it's going to be. But yeah, city living, when you think of the city, uh, a lot of people think of Charleston, they think of West Ashley. Now, suburban living, if, if you're all about living in the suburbs, if you're all about living in the suburbs, and this is kind of where we decided to live uh, because we have kids, we want them to be close to their friends, we want them to uh, be able to go to the amenity center, ride their bikes, things like that. You know, you can find that all throughout the Somerville area. There are tons of neighborhoods, some as small as 20 homes, some as large as a couple of thousand homes. Uh, for example, and zoom in here to Westcott Plantation, which is in Somerville. And let me zoom out so you can get a point of reference. Is Charleston is down here to the south in the harbor. Uh, Westcott is up here, right? Um, and this neighborhood has like 5,000 homes in it. Um, and you have all different kinds of uh, sizes, uh, builders that worked in here to build this home. You have a golf course that some of the homes are on. It is a public golf course. Um, you've got a lot of bike trails and walking trails going up and down Westcott Boulevard and Patriot Boulevard. You have um, 
on both sides of Westcott, you have this golf community in here. Um, but if you're not into golfing or if you, you're on a bit more of a budget, you have this area in the back of Westcott, which is called the farm. Whoops. Thought I clicked my pen there. Sorry about that. This area back here is known as the farm. And you can get houses for about 300000 in there. Again, this is early 2023, so if you're watching this in 2025 or something, the, the housing prices are going to be different. But this is, I mean, a lot of people choose this area because, again, you can get a $300,000 house, you can get a $600,000 house. It just depends on what you want. Do you want to live by the golf course? Do you want to live um, off the golf course? Do you want to have more space? Some of these lots are huge. Um, our first house was actually in the farm at Westcott in this area and you know it's you know 0.2 acres which doesn't sound like a lot but it's actually a pretty big yard especially in the middle of August when you got to mow it so and, and trust me I'm glad I have a teenager now who can mow it for me uh, <laughs> and then right next to it is Cusaw Creek which is a part of North Charleston. It's another golf community, but this golf course is a private golf course. And these houses will run 700,000 up into the millions. Likewise, you have other areas such as in Goose Creek, where you have uh, Crowfield Plantation, lots of suburban areas in here. These are three, $400,000 houses. Sometimes more, there is a gated community where they're gonna cost a little more. We can also zoom down into Mount Pleasant. Tons of communities, whatever you're looking for. If you want to look at the old village of Mount Pleasant, which is right here, okay? Now these houses, they start at a million dollars and they go up into the $10 million era. But let's say you don't have that budget and you still want to live in Mount Pleasant. You can come out this way You got Snee Farm, which um, that's going to be a little less expensive. These are going to be five, six hundred thousand dollar houses, seven hundred thousand. You've got this really, really interesting community out here called Park West. And Park West, um, there is so much, so many different styles of houses. You've got houses that start in the five hundred thousand dollar range. You've got townhouses that are going to be a lot less expensive out here, right? Uh, you've got a whole recreation facility out here. Uh, soccer fields, baseball, track, all that kind of stuff. And it backs up um, to the middle school and the Pinckney Elementary School. Um, and you've got all these other areas here. You've got a little community airport. But as you get deeper into Park West, there's some areas that are a little more exclusive. This is Goat Island. This, and this is a gated community. You can't just drive there, right? Um, you know, multi-million dollar homes. Right on the Wanda River, uh, which is deep water. You can put your boat there and you can get out to the harbor. Um, so those are kind of more the suburban areas. These are more the high-end suburban areas. Somerville Goose Creek you're gonna see a, a little bit more cost-effective if you don't mind the drive right there's a whole bunch of construction going up in here in this area that's in between Monk's Corner and Goose Creek it's technically Monk's Corner um, but this is Fox Bay Plantation master plan community with a great great amenity centers um, pool, all the things that you want, a little shopping center out front, they just put in a Publix over here, um, and then going down Cypress uh, Gardens Boulevard, you have, or Sarkis Gardens Road, I'm sorry, it's been a long day folks, sorry about that, um, you have Spring Grove Plantation, and you're going to have houses in both of these communities, you know, uh, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar houses, and it's near, if we go down here, to Cypress Gardens which if you didn't know, Cypress Gardens is this really cool nature preserve. Um, and they've got, if you see this right here, let me pull this over so you can see it a little better. This is like a blackwater swamp that you can canoe through. Um, it's pretty fun. 
and they've got a it's called a swamp arium it's kind of like an aquarium but they have all these um, animals that you would find in a swamp like alligators and turtles and fish and things like that um, and then you have this butterfly garden and I don't know if you can tell from the size of it it actually has a street view here this butterfly garden is huge and it, it it's kind of hard to see behind the trees but you can walk through there and there's thousands and tens of thousands of butterflies so if you're really into that that's kind of an interesting way to look at it so now talking about these areas of monk's corner um, this is where we start to talk about rural land because there's a lot of empty space in charleston having said that there's a, some areas that you're not going to be able to build a house on uh, there's a reason it's called low country um, we are very close to the water table we're right at sea level in most of the area and you can't just put a house on any piece of land um, the soil has to be able to support the house the you know the the land has to perk so you can put in a septic field you got to be able to find a well that kind of stuff but once you do that it's not that bad I mean it's it's actually pretty desirable to do so so let's take a look at the map again I want to show you a couple of rural areas out here um, again this is the Air Force Base we were just up here uh, over by Cypress Gardens as we zoom out you're gonna see there's a lot of space out here so I want to point out something to you real quick here if you look out here and, and there's this little town that's pronounced Hughie I know it looks like hugger but it's Hughie trust me um, and then you got Cordsville Witherby Woodland these are just little tiny towns uh, but this big area is called the Francis Marion National Forest most likely you're not gonna find much out there because it's a national forest people don't build there right so and this is of course on, on this part of Charleston towards the east the northeast uh, that's why this area has pretty much stayed vacant I mean you can even from the sky level see the lots of land uh, over on the west side but on the east side there's like nothing and there's a reason for it it's a great big forest um, so I wouldn't get my hopes up about anything over there what I would say right is if you're looking to find something rural and I'm just talking from a financial standpoint and I cannot obviously guarantee uh, return on investment that kind of stuff but if I were a betting person I would say that you would get your most bang for your buck in this area if you were looking to go rural the reason for that is a lot of the development uh, from Charleston because I mean you can see this is one big city it's saturated the development is going this way up the 26 and the so-called 50-year plan is to push the development this way as well that 50-year plan is from uh, the 50-year plan is, is just from you know Charleston planning meetings and things like that that you see um, literally what they talk about is this little river here that actually gets to be a big river is called the Edisto River and it goes down to Edisto Island um, but this area is where a lot of the development is going so why do I say hey you want to be rural you want to go somewhere where they're developing there's a reason your return on investment because as this area grows so will your uh, equity in your land or whatever you're building out there same thing out this way so there's a lot of opportunity still in Charleston to get some really nice things out there Ridgeville is where the Volvo plant is that's where they build their midsize sedan I think it's called the S60 um, and the XC90 which is their SUV worldwide this this is where they build them right uh, and they ship them out from there um, and you have a lot of the support companies for Volvo are also in that area Oops. and as a matter of fact sorry I didn't switch my mouse there 
you can see it right here. They built their own off-ramp off the 26 here. And this is the facility right there. And as this facility grows, you're starting to see a lot of communities start to pop up out here. Eastwood Homes is building something out there. Um, you got stuff, a lot of stuff up there. There's a lot of things starting to happen in this area. So this is really a good area to go looking at. Up here towards Cross, which is along the lake, it's beautiful. Um, you know, especially if you can get something on the lake, it's it's really nice. Um, but I mean, you can have horses, you can do all kinds of things. You can do uh, uh, any other kind of livestock. You can do uh, agricultural stuff if that's what you would like to do. Pineville's like that, St. Stephen, Bono, um, on the borders of the Francis Marion Forest. And then out here more so, St. George, by the way, is the Dorchester County seat. Dorchester County is where um, Somerville is located, obviously. If you live in Somerville and you get called for jury duty, yeah, you gotta go all the way out here to St. George. I'm not kidding, I've had to do it myself. It's um, <laughs> not fun. So, and there's, uh, you know, because between here and there, there's nothing. But there is a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of land available in these areas. And you can see, you know, there's just little plots of land out there. Some, are, some used to be owned, actually a lot used to be owned by Mead West Vaco, which was a, a paper mill facility and lumber facility that... Um, basically they planted a whole bunch of pine trees they had a lot of pine tree forestry that's why there's if you look really closely um, I don't know if you can see it here you kind of can you see how the pine trees are like in lines they, they that's because they planted them and it's like that all over uh, these rural areas st. George like I said is the county seat and like I said you you can find I don't know if you want an equestrian ranch if you want um, livestock, if you want to have a farm, that kind of thing, this is where you need to be looking, right? One quick thing too with rural stuff, and, and sometimes people ask, I'm gonna switch to a different map here. Where can, um, what is considered Charleston as far as, how far out does it go? Is it just the Tri-County area? I'm gonna switch to just a map version of this. It's a little easier to see. And I'm going to put up an overlay of all the counties. When people think about these counties, you've got this county here, which is Charleston. Hold on. This is Charleston County here. This is Dorchester County here. And this is Berkeley County here, right? And then, as we zoom out, we can see you've got surrounding counties of Colleton, Orangeburg, Calhoun, Clant. Cl Sorry, Clarendon, can't talk today, sorry about that. And if I put in, this is just gonna be an overlay on the counties of where our MLS, the Charleston Trident MLS is. A lot of that goes way out to here, sorry about the huge zoom out there. But you can see, this almost goes to the loop in Columbia. So yes, we can help you with anything in any of these areas and sometimes we can help you with things outside of these areas as well so uh, as a matter of fact this is uh, this is the 9th of February 9th of February 2023 when I'm doing this this is actually my MLS Let's see if I can get the actives to pop up right now there's 2500 homes in our MLS and all these little green dots are homes that are active in the MLS and you'll see that there are some outside of the area as well but the majority of them are going to be in these areas and they go through the state of South Carolina I'm going to remove the county uh, boundary because that's a little confusing right and so you know we can help you with pretty much whatever you're looking for um, one thing too is I am equestrian uh, 
equestrian property certified so if you need help with that I'd be happy to help you with that um, you know all you got to do is just give us a call let us know what you like what you don't like um, where you live what you want your lifestyle to be like do you want to live in the city do you want to live more in a suburban area with like a lot of amenity centers and things for the kids do you want to live more rural and have a lot more land um, let me know give me a call shoot me a text send me an email days nights weekends we love getting your calls we love getting your texts. we help tons of people move to the low country relocating from out of state days nights weekends I got your back we're moving to Charleston South Carolina we'll talk soon see you later bye